from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a Cube Conversation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios today for a CUBE conversation, kind of an interesting conversation um, around trying to connect big enterprises who are always trying to be innovative with small companies who are usually innovative but don't necessarily have the connections into the big companies that have a little bit more resources and might be interested in the things that they're working on. And really doing that through, you know, podcasts, which is a, you know, a really growing uh, venue, it's been going on for a while, but we're seeing a, a big uptake and I think the consumption of podcasts and who's doing podcasts, the brands behind podcasts, are really happy to have them all the way from Texas. It's Aaron Greger and Sia Yasatora, the co-founders of Innovation Calling, so welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, so did I get the description right of Innovation Calling or give uh, give everyone kind of your your overview of what you guys are up to? Yeah, so Innovation Calling was developed with the fact of there's being in Dallas, we've got a lot of large corporations with innovation labs. They're trying to stand out. They're trying to connect with great talent. But a lot of these people, you know, everybody's got an innovation lab. And like we've talked about this before, if you're in the Fortune 500, you are a tech company, whether you like it or not. And so we just saw this potential to highlight these companies to be able to hopefully get talent. And then on the other side, enterprise companies are trying to connect with startups, established startups, not ideas, but established, and there's a lot to sift through. So hopefully the goal of the podcast is to highlight these companies and help with that sifting and help with the talent pool and really connecting the creators with the companies that are trying to create. And what's kind of the objective of that, of that matching? Because clearly it's not a hiring, you know, you're, not a, you're not a hiring right. service, you're talking about companies, not people. So what's kind of the objective? I mean, what's kind of your, your best case if, if this connection works? Well. So for us, our best case scenario is obviously we are at the forefront of innovation with emerging technologies today. Obviously Silicon Valley has a lot of talent, has a lot of corporations already in that space. But when you think of the mid-tier, second tier cities, like Dallas, for example, you don't have as many tech workers, but there's still need for that type of talent, right? Right. With podcasting as our venue and medium to communicate that, we also realized that there was a great potential for these corporations to leverage podcasting as a way to communicate and do their outreach. Again, around those mid-tier, second-tier cities where you might not have the plethora of folks here in the Bay Area. Right, right. Yeah. But even if they connect with that company, is it is are you thinking that there's going to be some type of technical alliance, uh, some type of partnership, an OEM agreement, or what, again, kind of, if you're pitching this to the small company, what what am I like, yeah, I'm, you're finally getting, you know, I listened to your podcast the other day, yeah. you had a, a woman on from Ericsson, yeah. and I, Building some 5G, you know, widget. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, what's kind of my um, anticipated outcome of participating and and kind of following your funnel and connecting with Ericsson? So we have a couple different ways. First of all, you we can through us. We've actually made a lot of handshakes. That's what I love to do is help create the handshakes, okay. and we've done that personally. The other side is we are putting, we're taking the next step in doing live events. So that podcast that you talked about was a series of women in tech leadership where it's not just a live podcasting event, but a networking event. So we're really taking the next step in creating these opportunities that you can be in the same room, um, more exclusive type room that we're putting together, a lot of invite only perspective, but helping to make those connections where I see somebody from Ericsson's going to be there, I want to make sure, and now I can actually be in person to make that happen too. Okay, and then why the podcast? How did you come to, to use podcasts as kind of your medium? So I think there's been a tradition uh, in the last five, six years that podcasts does have the potential to blow up. Well, I think now in 2019, we've actually hit that threshold where there's actually consumer response. And with enough studies, what they've discovered is most podcast listeners are actually educated business professionals. They tend to, uh, to lean towards technology, uh, yet you don't see a lot of technology branded podcasts. And so we looked at the market, a lot of hobbyist type Mm -hmm. uh, and personal branded podcasts, but we think now is the right time for corporations to make the investment to understand that the medium of traditional advertising is actually evolving, and podcasts is leaving that forefront. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll see you're seeing a lot of huge investments actually here. Uh, there's you know hundred million dollar plus investments for the uh, purpose of growing the podcast uh, community. Uh, and which one are you talking? Is that is that for the infrastructure or is that for the actual you know talent in the community and the content generation? 
Yes. So, yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything. Yeah. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. A company that does a lot of production but builds the community too. Right. Yeah. So uh, I listen to Malcolm Gladwell's all the time. We got to interview him at QuickBooks Connect a couple years ago. Yes. You know, really interesting um, podcast. You know, guys like Joe Rogan and stuff yeah. that that obviously got a ton of great pub when uh, when he had Elon Musk on who smoked uh, not really a joint but kind of a joint and <laughs> and, and, and that. So, uh, but I'm yeah. curious on the business side. Are there some you know, kind of lighthouse podcasts that you guys see that you use either as an example for what you're trying to develop or as an example to show, I'm just gonna keep using Ericsson just top of mind, the yeah. one I just watched, to show them to say, hey, this is the type of thing that you guys should be trying to do. Who are some of your favorites? So yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Hackable, uh, McAfee that has uh, rolled out. When you think of tech, Brandon, and that is what we do focus on is technology-based uh, corporations, uh, we tend to lead towards speeds and feeds. That's kind of our, we're, we're engineered background folks in general, right? Uh, but I thought Hackable does a great job of pulling in some technology, but then using stories or using you know, events of being hacked, for example, something that audience can relate to, and it's a storytelling. And that's the or story arc that I think in general, we're helping corporations understand the value of storytelling. It's not just about a product, it's not just selling a, you know, a cup per se, mm -hmm. but the story around it how good that cup of coffee will feel when you drink it or you know, right, the experience right, yeah. or memories that you have that it evokes. So how far are you along on your journey? I know you, you have a number of podcasts up uh, yeah. already on your site. Are you the first inning, the third inning, or you know, is it still kind of early days or where are you in your development of this, of, of your concept and your company? Well, we have a, I can't, a couple of different components to okay. our, our business. So the podcast has what I was telling you about too. We have a network component. We've got a consulting services. Our goal for Innovation Calling was let's first prove the concept. Let's plug into a network. Let's make sure we will be the test case essentially, right. and we've proven that. So from that perspective of that component, we're we're hitting um, we're almost at 100,000 downloads of our podcast. You know we're doing pretty well with right. that. And now as we build, it's the next components. We're bringing on a couple customers from a consulting basis. Um, and we help not just with the production, but with the promotion. So we spoke earlier about, I always kind of look at if the tree falls in the forest, but no one was there to hear it, did it actually happen? I feel that that saying fits with a lot of po corporate podcasts. They're out there, right. but no one knows they're out there. So are you going to continue spending that kind of money on production and time with your employees if you're not going to do anything to promote it and no one knows it exists? Right. So we help on both sides of that scale. So on your podcast, which has been the, the Women in Tech theme, or is that yeah. you know kind of the theme you're going to continue, or is that kind of a launching theme and you're going to turn into other themes? Well, that's just a component. Okay. So Innovation Calling, there's men on the actual podcast, but we started that specific series to, yes, talk about the technology perspective of women, but how did you get there? Right. You know, what's your story of growing? So that's just a segment of that podcast. Um, again, to bring in, to really theme the live events, to help grow that community right. on a segment basis. So as that grows, we'll probably, um, our goal is to do a couple different other types of segments. We talked about a channel um, event. idea, yes, an event yesterday with a client. So we want to actually like take the bigger part of Innovation Calling and, and uh, niche it down bit by bit on the live event scale. Okay, and then on the event side, how often are you doing them? You know, kind of what's the, what's the format, how many yeah. people? Uh, frequency and, and, and you know what's the the oh, I guess the format. Is <laughs> she right is ready. Let, 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 ready me, let, me, let me tell She's you. She's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. No, for events. Well, first off, there's wine and hors d'oeuvres. So yeah. if we if we can't wine you and dine you, I suppose. <laughs> but no, uh, really. Again, we're about uh, building community first and foremost. The Dallas Fort Worth area uh, has is making great strides in the entrepreneurial side, big investments to get major corporations to come into the area. So we think there's a great opportunity for these folks to come together. A lot of folks from outside of town who are looking to build their network, again, because they've been relocated. And then, um, you know, our themes. Women in technology is our first theme because, quite frankly, we're, we're sort of biased a little bit towards that, right? right? right. Well, it's yeah. a good theme. But, yeah. um, you know, help I, our people. But uh, again, <laughs> it is a uh, very casual format right now. It's interview-based. So is it 100 people, yeah. 500 people? We actually started and we want it to be intimate because okay. we want the value of the network to actually make genuine uh, connections yeah. as okay. opposed to if it gets too large, I feel like some individual might be left off the side, yeah. okay. right? So we actually started off, our very first one that sold out was 40 people, and we okay. did not want more than that in the room. Yeah. Okay. Um, quite frankly, then it gets claustrophobic. And what about yeah. frequency? Once Just a month. Once a month. Yeah. Yep. Once a month. Yeah. Our goal is to 
keep the size about to 75 to 100 of those, max out at 100, but okay. make sure to see his point, keep them in an intimate scale. And then what about geography? So obviously you guys are based out of Dallas-Fort Worth mm -hmm. area, you're here in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley. What's kind of your geology or ge geographic play? How do you see this kind of evolving? Absolutely, we would love yeah. to share we would love to share this across the United States. Yeah. Um, again, we want to make sure Dallas is viable, proves a point. It is a second tier city versus something like the Silicon Valley area or Chicago, New York, et cetera. Right. Um, we are not trying to create a brand new women in technology uh, group, if you will. We're actually working in collaboration with existing women technology groups. We're just simply leveraging the networking opportunity through live podcasting. Again, yeah. growing the podcast medium. Yeah, I would say by early 2020, our goal is to be in, you know, to come out here and be able to have an audience to do a live event. You know, we actually had drinks with someone last night about that collaboration. So we'd love to grow it on a perspective and be able to do it in different communities. Because right. I've been podcasting for about five years through other businesses and the live event is just, it's really, well, I mean, you know, you do right, live interviews, do, do you do live, live events, events, but there's just <laughs> something special about that connection and then being there live to do the interview. It's a really fun format. Right. So do you have any uh, any upcoming guests you can plug or share with us today on your next couple of podcasts? Hurt, yeah. Well, so our next event is actually uh, April 9th. 9th. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, the day's going away. April 9th, and we're going to have Crystal Christensen, VP of Tech Support at SonicWall. Um, so we're very excited to have her uh, on board. Mm -hmm. And we're still in confirmation, but we're going to be uh, expecting folks from uh, Salesforce, HPE, and Facebook okay, great. for our next events. And where do people go to, uh, to listen to the podcast? innovationcalling.com. All right. We'll see you. Aaron, thanks for uh, for stopping by. Hopefully you had a good, successful couple of days in Silicon Valley and uh, and safe travels home. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Thank you very much for having us, us Jeff. Right. Appreciate it. She's Aaron. She's C. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at our Palo Alto studios for a CUBE conversation. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.